To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to another episode of Dissecting Minecraft, and I'm joined, as usual, with my friend Methods. How's it going, Methods? I'm doing great, how are you? Good. All right, and this week we are the Will and Carlton of Minecraft. <laughs> but uh, before we start doing some dancing <laughs> to Tom Jones, uh, we are going to be looking at some bedrock breaking techniques. So uh, yeah, why don't we uh, take it away? All right, so first thing we have to cover is like we mentioned last episode is a little bit of block events. Mm. What are block events? Are basically just a special term in the game which schedules an update. Right. So if we retract this piston here, we're going to schedule a retraction update basically and it's called a block event. Right. We can use block events to order things in a certain order. So if I just retract this line here, we can see it perfectly orders it. So this one here is number one, number two, number three, number four. All right. All right. So, what actually can we use this for? Here, set up a little example. Don't be too scared <laughs> of the mess I just created. Basically, let me actually unpower this. Here we have a zero tick generator, zero ticking this piston, moving the diamond block to here. Mm -hmm. Here we have a zero tick generator, moving the diamond block to here. Mm -hmm. And here we have a zero tick generator, moving the diamond block one last time. Right, so three zero ticks, okay. Exactly. Right. So if we just connected this all to one redstone line, it would be completely kind of random which piston actually triggers first, and it would not work. Mm -hmm. But what we basically use here is the first zero tick gets triggered without anything extra, and then the second zero tick here uses this instant repeater, mm -hmm. right? which basically adds two block events to the whole thing, right. which is sort of a delay in, the, in, in one game tick. Okay. And then for the third, Zero tick generator, we actually have two zero tick repeaters, instant right. repeaters. And this way we can, for example, let me quickly add the block back, teleport this block three times in one game tick. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe once more. Huh? And just unpowered it. There we go. Nice. And this would keep on working. You could add more and more block event delay every time you do it, and you could just teleport this block right so far. i just want to make sure that i understand this so what we're what we're basically doing here is we're scheduling an event to happen at some point in the future right and we're we're adding more of these scheduled events so we can so we can control which one of these happens first so that's how we get the, the block to go in this in this order and control the order that these pistons fire in the exactly. same exactly but instead of scheduling which happens first is we schedule which ones happen later right by just adding more block event delay right okay Okay, that's pretty much already everything to block event delay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk a little bit about headless piston tech. So what is a headless piston? Here we have one. It's basically an extended piston where we, with TNT magic, deleted the extension part of it. Okay. And what does a headless piston do if we update it? For example, by placing a block in front of it, it just deletes the block. Because suddenly, it okay. suddenly realized, we can also do this without placing the block, it suddenly realizes, hey, my head is gone and it places the head back. Ah. And since there's a block where the head should actually be, it just deletes the block. Okay, that makes sense. All right, yep. Okay, if there actually is a block that would get pulled by this though, then absolutely nothing happens. Okay, then we have one more interesting behavior. So here we have a headless piston, and here we have a normal one. Mm -hmm. And if I just extend this piston here, which will update this headless piston, we can basically flip the headless pistons around. Right, okay. Does it matter that they're sticky pistons, or does that work with normal pistons as well? Uh, for some stuff it matters, right here it really doesn't. Okay, right. then we have another very interesting behavior, which is this one here. So what we're going to do here is basically, we start moving the concrete block in front of the headless piston. Right. In the same time, game tick, we're actually updating the headless piston via turning this torch here off. Okay. And it will instantly finish the movement of this block, like a zero tick would, for example. So if we look carefully, you can see this block actually instantly arrives. Right, okay. <laughs> That's quite hard to see, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just have to believe me, it's actually yeah, like, yeah, this, okay. like a zero tick. Yep, yep. Okay, and then we have one more behavior. When we, for example, delete with a headless piston, we delete the extension part of a piston. It mm -hmm. will actually just drop as a block. Oh, it drops the whole piston. Right, okay. There we see, we just drop this piston as a block right. without okay. TNT or anything. Okay, so when it's a normal block, it just deletes the block, but if it's an extended piston, it drops the, drops the piston. 
Just if you delete the piston extension, the yes. extension arm, then the piston will drop as a block. That's actually right. not possible. Okay. Unless we basically use this here. Okay. Okay, and that's pretty much all we already need to know for headless piston tag. So here I've set it up like at, by the way, this is at examples bedrock piston breaker. He also made sure this is all correct what I'm talking now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how does it work? Basically, this headless piston here updates first. Mm -hmm. And as we can see, we have a budded extended piston arm in front of it. So this will basically delete this piston here, mm -hmm. dropping it as an item. Yep. But it will also update it and schedule a retraction block event. Right. So, that, so that block schedule an on. event to have a retraction event in this block where the piston is right now. Right. Then secondly, this piston here updates, which starts retracting the slime structure and this downwards facing sticky piston here into the block where our sidewards facing bullet piston was, but it already got deleted. Okay. Yep. And then we have the third headless piston here, which is also the last to update. And this basically does the same thing as over here. It instantly finishes the movement of this piston. Right. So this piston here, the downwards facing one, will basically instantly move to where, let me quickly rebut this so it doesn't update. It will instantly move to here. Right. And then it arrives. And since we have scheduled this retraction event here, it will actually finish the other piston's retraction event and retract inside the bedroom. Right, and then that breaks the bedrock. Basically, did that. And as we've learned exactly, just watch it from below. Might be nice to see. There yep. we go. Awesome, go awesome. <laughs> That's brilliant. Fantastic. And as you can also see, we did not actually break the sidewards facing piston mm -hmm. with this headless piston. We actually broke the downwards facing one. Downward facing one. So of course. Yep. So basically, we're tricking the pistons into retracting the wrong piston yeah yeah so we yeah so the the piston is there first we've we're basically telling that one to retract but we move the other piston in the way before it before that happens so the wrong piston that retracts basically at least exactly okay and this and this this kind of stuff works for the portal frame as well right it works for literally every single block in the game there's nothing it can't delete okay. so we could just set any block underneath here it would just delete okay. it doesn't really matter okay. okay and since we talked last time about Taltic priority and for example this one here uses the slime block update order. So facing north, um, the, the east block updates first, and then the other side. And as we know, it always first is the weight updates first. Since we have two here, it's actually directional, mm -hmm. since we have a conflict. OK, since so we covered tile pri tick priority last episode, I thought mm -hmm. I might set it up as well. So okay. here we just have the minus three priority with two repeaters. Mm -hmm. Here we have the minus one priority with two repeaters and a dust in the middle. And here we just have the zero priority with the comparators. Yep. And now we could also just quickly show that this works with every block. Let's take an end portal frame, unbutt the middle piston, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to unpower it. And yep. there we go. It's gone. It's gone. Yep. Perfect. And also, since the slime block one is actually directional, usually you have the freedom to do those in the direction whatever you want. You can just adjust. But with Taltic priority, we're no longer using the slime block update order, and we can just do it in all directions. There we go. Perfect. Bedrock is gone. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so have so one question, and I know I know the answer already, but uh, how do we set up those those the, those headless pistons? Like, if we're in survival, we want to have some headless pistons. How do we how do we do that? Okay, there's multiple ways to do it. Most of them actually involve TNT or other sorts of explosions, usually. Mm -hmm. And what we just have to make sure is that we only blow up the piston head and not the base. So here's a really nice way. Smoky ninety five dog discovered. We can use something like this, where we just use an end crystal that blows up and it's all correctly set up. So now you would think, haha, it didn't work, but <laughs> surprise. <laughs> there you go, yeah. It actually does. I was waiting for that. <laughs> and nice. now we can put some blocks in front of here and yep. just yep. bam, gone. Perfect. Brilliant. Other ways involve TNT or TNT minecarts. There's smart layouts by Ed Example, by Smoky Dog, a bunch of other people. I did it myself too. Uh -huh. Also, shout out to Ed Example. Those were his bedrock breakers. He already also explained it all to me okay. because I'm yeah. not the greatest <laughs> bedrock breaker ever. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll stick some links in the description to to any uh, videos here that are, are, are useful as well. Yep. Another trick you might be interested in is if you put, for example, rails on a block, 
it actually makes them more blast resistant than without. Mm. So that's what you're going to see in Ed's video, for example, where he puts uh, rails on all kinds of blocks, like the redstone blocks above has rails on them, yeah. the pistons do, that all just makes them more blast resistant. Yeah, that was. So, I was wondering why that was, because I, I, I used this myself in, my, in a recent episode where I broke the end portal frame and I was putting um, some rails on top of redstone blocks. I wasn't quite sure why I was doing that, but I followed it anyway. But yeah, that's, yep. that's the reason why. So yeah, that's really cool. Yep. All right. And those are pretty much the ways you can do it. In 112, you could also use dragon eggs. And mm -hmm. I think those are all the ways, explosions and dragon eggs. Right, right. So, so in uh, on Cycraft, obviously you've uh, created a one k by one k perimeter with removing all the bedrock, right? So, and I think you've got yep. a bunch of fine machines that remove the bottom layer. So that basically uses oh, yeah. all of this tech, but it's all movable, right? Oh yeah, that's actually crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that is insane. I've, I've seen a whole bunch of videos about that stuff. But uh, also, yeah. this changed a bunch over the years. So what we use there is no longer usable in in one thirteen, for example. Right. The behavior here with moving the basically moving it over, this is completely new to 113. And a bunch of other stuff changed as well. So yeah, for 113, you would have to redesign it all. Okay. <laughs> but we don't plan on making another 1K by 1K by perimeter anytime soon. No, no updating, I, so we could. No, I guess once you've done that kind of project once, you're not gonna do it again, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so that's about it for another episode. We have uh, been breaking bedrock and, uh, and end frames. So uh, yeah, that was really cool. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions or any kind of feedback, just that, that kind of stuff, then uh, get it in the comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I will see you later.